Yeah. Analytics off the chain, all the channels not the same. Jake and Kyle, you know the name. Headline of nation, we running the game. Yo, what is going on, Headliner Nation? Big breaking news in the NFL this morning. As Philadelphia Eagles tight end Zach Ertz is on the move, headed out west to the Arizona Cardinals. Did not anticipate that move happening. I mean, if he wasn't traded in the preseason, was not expecting it to happen during the season, especially the morning after they played on Thursday night football. So completely caught off guard this morning, but this is great news for some people, especially Ertz and especially Dallas Goddard. Those two together on the same team were never going to be able to be consistent fantasy football tight ends for you. And now that they have separated Dallas Goddard, this is going to put him in the top 12 tight end conversation all season long. Okay. So that's number one. Number two for Zach Ertz, for the Arizona Cardinals to go get go get him, that means that they want to utilize him. Max Williams was seeing some targets before he ended up getting hurt. Now, was he a guy that I was anticipating being great every single week? No, and I talked about it because you have A.J. Green, have DeAndre Hopkins, Chase Edmonds is seeing work, Rondell Moore, Christian Kirk, so many pieces there. But would the Arizona Cardinals really go get Zach Ertz if they didn't plan on using him? I think not. Now, is his weekly ceiling going to be limited? I think so. But is he going to be in that possibly 10 to 14 range for me on a weekly basis? Yes, especially if he's getting the opportunities that Max Williams was. So we are going to have to watch that. Now, is he going to be able to play this week? Um, well, here's the thing. I'm trying to figure that out right now because, okay, so since he already played a game this week, I'm going to assume that he cannot play again. I'm seeing a lot of responses and a lot of different things right now telling me that he cannot play again this week. And I'm trying to keep up with that. So that's great because I was thinking to myself beforehand, wait a second, can he play for the Cardinals? If he can, is he going to get double fantasy points if you started him? That would have been absolutely insane. So doesn't look like he's going to be allowed to play this week because he already played a game. So moving forward, obviously, a lot to talk about there. Um, does this help anyone for Philadelphia? I mean, obviously, we talked about Goddard. Definitely helps him, especially if they use him running routes more. Zach Ertz was running routes on 93% of their passing plays. Dallas Goddard was in the 70 range because he was blocking a little bit more. So I anticipate them giving him more of that role that Ertz had where he was running more routes. Again, Top 12 tight end the rest of the season. For the rest of the Eagles, I don't know if this really helps a whole lot because it's kind of a mess with Jalen Hurts being very inconsistent in the passing game. That's causing a whole lot of troubles right now. It could mean some more targets for Devontae Smith, but I don't really think so. We're talking about, what, five, six, seven, maybe eight targets a game. We're not talking about a whole lot. Those could just end up transferring to Dallas Goddard, and then maybe there's a couple of more that go to everybody else. For the Arizona Cardinals, though, this does pose a problem because Zach Ertz, to me, is a much better tight end than Max Williams. Nothing against Max Williams, but we've seen it from Zach Ertz, right? We know what he can do. So what does this mean? Well, DeAndre Hopkins is still the guy there, but this is just going to lead to more inconsistencies at the wide receiver position for us. We're going to see A.J. Green, Christian Kirk, and Rondell Moore all have fantasy value throughout the season, but when? What matchups will allow it? When do we start them? When do we sit them? What's the ceiling? What's the floor? The floor for me for those three guys comes down a lot because now we're inserting Zach Ertz into the mix. The ceiling probably doesn't move anywhere. I mean, Rondell Moore still a really big ceiling for me. AJ Green, Christian Kirk, probably about the same thing, but this is going to cause problems. As far as Arizona wide receivers go the rest of the season, I'm not confident in anybody that's not named DeAndre Hopkins. They're going to be throwing the ball a lot, but really we're going to have to see how Zach Ertz is utilized to start. But I think this is a great move overall. This really establishes Dallas Goddard's value for the rest of the season. It establishes Zach Ertz's value for the rest of the season. Again, I've got him probably in that 10 to 14 range based on potential volume and touchdown upside. If he's getting what we saw Max Williams getting and he has a little bit more of in his play style than what Max Williams did, 
then we could see a little bit of value from him. So there you go, Headliner Nation. You're breaking news. Wanted to make sure I got this video out to you all right away to let you know what I thought about everybody involved in the trade and the teams around them. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit the like button if you appreciate the content. And let me know down in the comments what you are thinking about Dallas Goddard and Zach Ertz. I'm going to get out of here, though. All of you stay safe and stay healthy, and I will catch you on the next episode of the Fantasy Headliners. Analytics all the chain, all the channels, not the same. Jake and Kyle, you know the name. Headline Nation, we running the game. Y'all stuck on third down. Your content's plain Jane. Headlines on top now. We gonna move and change. Podcast off the rip. Draft guide, so legit. Fantasy world, our game tight. You know we about that job life. Stuck in a rut and you need some motivation. Face your head to the channel for this headline nation. I'm a headliner.